You've tuned into I Work for Him, the mouthpiece for the faith and work movement. We're your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. Today, we are having another bonus episode of the I Work for Him podcast, where we're highlighting another author from the I Work for Him book. Ford Taylor, we are so thrilled to have you here with us. Well, thank you, Martha, and thank you, Jim. Uh, as you know, I love being with you guys, whether we're face-to-face, having dinner, doing an interview, whatever it is. I just love being with you. Thank you. You can check out Ford online, transformlead.com, and Transformational Leadership Ford. I remember when we first heard about it, and we started reading your books, and we got to attend a Transformational Leadership one day in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was transforming to us and impactful, and the relationships we made that day have gone on and on and on. In fact, we got a board member out of that last time we did a TL, Ford, but we want to step back for a second. As we do this show, we want people to get to know Ford Taylor. Tell us a little bit about that faith and work story that God's been writing on your heart. Well, you, you know, Jim, that I was blessed and cursed at the same time. You know, we started a really small company, I actually bought a company that was on the verge of bankruptcy. And over years, by the grace of God, it was successful. I mean, on paper, it probably shouldn't have made it. Then we sold a piece of our company uh, to a larger company. And ultimately, I found myself as being the CEO of a $300 million company. And in that process, I had some huge successes, but also some huge failures, one of those being a moral failure. And after my wife forgave me, and I understood what unconditional love and unconditional forgiveness look like, I decided I wanted to learn how to be that way myself. And as I moved away from that, and God put on my heart to do leadership training, consulting, coaching, from that perspective of teaching people, what would it look like to to practically implement walking out the best we could of, of looking like Jesus, of being unconditionally loving, unconditionally forgiving with practical, implementable tools to make a company more profitable, to make a marriage better, to make relationships between parents and children, for government leaders to be able to do things differently. And so from that, that's where this training came from. Uh, And it's turned into something probably bigger than we ever imagined. So to God be the glory. That's so good. So when people open up the book, I Work For Him, and they read your chapter, what's it about? What did you write about in there? Well, we wrote a little bit about uh, who we are, uh, about our team, a little bit of my story on, on what I just shared about the moral failure. You know, on, on the outside, you can look really good, and a lot of people do, and that was me. You know, beautiful wife, three beautiful daughters. And so just a little bit about that story, but then to, to really not just focus on that story, because a lot of people, when they want to interview me or get me to write a chapter in their book, Sometimes that's, that's where they stop the focus, but the focus ought to be on the redemption. You know, what, what can God do with a broken man or a broken woman? And so we really want people to know that not just the successes and not just the failures, but in that combination uh, that we, we have things that can help people, practical tools, maybe not make the same mistakes I made. And if they have, be able to overcome some of those mistakes and also be able to be successful financially, emotionally, relationally, mentally, spiritually, in every way, not just in one of those areas of their lives, but to be able to do it in every sphere in which they live, work, or play. Transformational leadership has impacted our lives, and we're so grateful for the training that you put together, because it's not, it's not like I'm going, to, I'm going to go to a workshop to become a better leader. It's I'm going to go to a workshop, and we're going to peel back all the ogre onion layers, and we're going to uncover the stuff that we've been burying for our lifetime that makes us who we are, but shouldn't make us who we are. And we're going to seek healing in all those layers, and then seek healing in all our relationships, which again, then starts making us a person of influence in our workplace because of the transformational power of Jesus in our lives. And that's what I love about transformational leadership. But Ford, that's not your only you know, transformational leadership is, is you, but on a day-to-day basis, you take transformational leadership into organizations and corporations across the globe to help them bring about culture change. Talk a little bit about that part of your world. Well, you know, we, we know that there's that a lot of people want to change and they want to have an improvement in whatever relationship they're in. And so we, we call an organization anytime two or more people are in relationship. And if you have influence with at least one person in any organization, that by definition makes you a leader. And so we all have influence and we can influence up to our boss, 
Uh, we can influence up to our parents, our sports coach. We can do across to our peers, our neighbors, our coworkers. We can influence down. That would be our children, our employees. And we also have influence on ourselves, how much we change. And then from that, we also have influence with God. And to go through change in an organization, we'll, we'll call it a company, a government, a city, a state, an individual, it takes three levels. And three of those levels are individual. And that means that we have new knowledge. And we can get that. That's the easiest level to change. And from that new knowledge, that new information, we have a choice of whether our attitude changes. And our attitude affects our feelings, our emotions. And from there, the third level is a behavioral change. But here's the fun part, is that if enough people in the same organization change in those three areas, you can get to the fourth level of change, which is what we call relational, organizational, or cultural change. And I call this the second best news on the, earth, on the planet. It only takes three to 5% of any organization to control or shift the culture. Here's the worst news. It only takes three to 5% to control or shift the culture. So we ask organizations, who controls your culture? And we try to teach them to, to have a positive culture that has high performers with healthy relationships. And in that place, the whole, the whole company shifts or the whole family shifts, or who knows, maybe even a city or a nation. Well, and that's just it, you know, Ford. I think with that little part that you just explained, I think a lot of people are, can lean in and go, maybe that's what we're even seeing around us every day. And we don't realize it, that that, you know, whether that influence is negative or positive, it's a, it can be a small percentage of people making that happen. So you work in organizations of all kinds. Um, give us a little peek into what you're seeing God do through the work that he has you doing. How's he moving? Well, you know, what's fun for me is because we, we have this version that we call plain glass, which is covert. And then we have another version that we call stained glass. So one version is TL and the other version is missing link. And when we go into an organization with TL, we give these biblical principles and, and what's fun is because there's so much truth in them that we'll have atheists, Muslims, other, you know, non-believers will come up and say, this stuff's really good. Where did you get it? And I'll normally say, you don't want to know, but they'll eventually talk me into telling them. And what's really fun is to be able to go in with the gospel in a language that people can understand without proselytizing them. And what happens? It's amazing how often we're able to take someone from atheism or non-believer and to becoming a believer once they see the truth by giving them the rest of the story. And for me, that's probably as fun as anything I do. So you're taking leadership training and, and presenting biblical principles, but as you say, under a plain glass. You know, you're not cha- citing chapter and verse. But when pe- people are curious, because we've been in the room with 50 or 60 people walking through this, and we've seen the curiosity growing. And we were in a church building with you. So people knew that there must have been something going on because it was in a church building. But I saw you unpeel the layers then at the end of the day, and people are like, oh, wow. I mean, this is powerful. And so I, I just want to encourage people to, to connect with you online, transformlead.com, transformlead.com. And I know you can do transformational leadership. You don't have to be at a live uh, showing of it or a live uh, presenting of it. You can do it online, tlondemand.com as well. Ford, we love to um, ask people this question. What's one thing you'd like to tell your younger you? I would tell my younger me that you made a lot of mistakes, but God's bigger than all your mistakes. And I would tell my younger me, don't feel bad over those mistakes because God uses them all. He uses every single mistake that you ever made if you'll let him to use those to help other people. And so the emotion that you hear is not sadness. The emotion is, is joy. How much God can take that younger me and use every bit of it, whether it was being sexually abused, whether it was cheating on your wife, whether it was mistreating an employee, whether it was doing the right thing, doing all your business with full of integrity. And so it didn't really matter. But I would tell my younger me, you're going to make some mistakes and it's going to be okay. Mm. 
You know, and those are great words for all of us to be able to hear, not just your younger you, but for all of us to hear Mm -hmm. and to embrace. Because one thing I know about you, Ford Taylor, is that your transparency is what makes you such a strong leader. And that was a very new concept for me um, when I met you and started seeing how that really played out. And, and I believe that if more of this world would embrace that, uh, we, we would live in a very different place. And I just have to say, one of the things about a transformational leadership is that it's, not, it's, a, it's a very practical approach to so many different areas of our life. And I got a favorite word out of it, hippocampus. So if you're interested and want to know what that is, you got to find out more on transformational leadership. <laughs> I was more about the you know how to you know the six step apology, which is also something I've written blogs about it. It impacted me so much. And we've done several shows with Ford in the past, you know, really delving into things like the six step apology. So Ford, in our final minute, you see, you have met young emerging leaders across the globe. You have fed your life and the scriptures and the truth of the gospel unto young emerging leaders across the globe. Speak some encouragement to those listening today who think that the world is without hope. Well, I would say to these young leaders that uh, I have three millennial daughters and I know a lot of their friends and and I hang out with a lot of young people. And and I say this from stage, that if I could only bring the XYZ generation into these trainings and leave all the gray-haired people out, that's all I would train. Because you do bring me great hope. You're smarter than we are. You can accelerate things through technology that, that we can't do. Uh, I would ask you to, to not be completely mad at us because we've made a lot of mistakes, but to join us, join the, the baby boomers, the older generations, and learn from our mistakes and, and maybe gain a little bit of wisdom from what we've learned from those mistakes. And that when we put all those generations together and we all take our mistakes, our successes, our failures with our gifts and talents, who knows, we might just get that 3 to 5% and really have an impact on the nation. You can hear more from Ford Taylor in Chapter 19 of I Work For Him and get a copy of that book at iworkforhim.com forward slash bookstore. Ford Taylor, thanks for sharing just a little bit of your heart today on I Work For Him. Thank you, Jim. It's always great being with y'all. You're such a blessing. You've been listening to I Work For Him with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg. We're Christ followers. Our workplace, it's our mission field. But ultimately, I, I work, work For, for Him. him.